It's been about a year since I think we last spoke, yes. right? And so you've greatly diversified your portfolio and you just had a very big transaction here. Benevere being sold to Janssen Pharmaceuticals, what, over a billion dollars here? Yes, that was a part of our life sciences entity where uh, we made an investment in a company um, by the name of Benevere. It's an oncolytic virus in the immunotherapy space and uh, we've been working on it for a while. We recently you put eight million into it, right? We put eight million yeah. into it, and we cut a deal to sell it to uh, Janssen, which is the division of uh, pharmaceutical division of of Johnson and Johnson for total all in could be over a billion dollars, billion forty. So it was a nice deal. It's certainly a big return here, uh, multiple times of X <laughs> return, yes. Phil. Um, is it, uh, is it guaranteed you're going to get the billion dollars? No, we, um, the way it's structured is that we got, we'll, we'll get $140 million up front and then there'll be milestone payments, which is typ typical for transactions like this in the pharmaceutical space. But uh, the fact that Johnson & Johnson is putting a tremendous amount of effort around it, we feel pretty comfortable with that. Uh, certainly, it's one a part, part of your portfolio that's been monetized. And I know you've mentioned this, I read the transcript of your last conference call, for instance, where um, for some time, Time, it seemed investors were undervaluing your portfolio, right? I mean, you know, you yes. you clearly think your portfolio has great value, but then your stock price wasn't reflecting that. So, do you think this is proving the naysayers wrong? Yeah. Well, I think this transaction, I think, is uh, hopefully indicative of the value that we have not only across our portfolio but in life sciences. You know, in general, our our company is a little bit different, a little bit difficult to uh, analyze because it, it is in a number of different industries, mm -hmm. steel. Um, energy, insurance, we recently bought an insurance company, life sciences, telecom, so it's uh, a bit more um, diversified than your typical uh, entity. But there are other companies out there that are listed that are pretty diversified. I mean, I think of there, Berkshire Hathaway, for instance, right? Co correct. So what, no, are, what were investors not getting then? Well, I think um, people want to see that, uh, uh, that we follow through with some of the different things that we're doing. They're um, looking at our capital structure at the same time. And, and the fact that this is a relatively nascent uh, entity for us, people like to see us like to see the the the, the uh, continuity with some of the different things that we're working on, and hopefully this transaction will will get people thinking like, okay, there's a there's a good deal of value here just in life sciences alone. Mm -hmm. But I think it uh, now is the time when uh, we expect uh, the the stock to start to move. Well, it certainly did move uh, on the back of that news. Not as much as I would have expected. <laughs> no. Okay, but did you get a lot of phone calls? I mean, are you now? I'm curious if this is going to make it easier for you to monetize other parts of your portfolio. Well, it's not a. I don't think it's a function of uh, making it easier or difficult. I okay. think it's a function of us taking our time and making sure that we're extracting the appropriate value. But I think people question what we were doing in life sciences and I think this is was really a testament to uh, the different investments that we have in that portfolio because we do have more than one. Uh, you have a lot as you mentioned you're pretty diversified you've got interests in steel you've got interests uh, obviously life sciences um, manufacturing but broadcast operations is another area that you've just recently gotten into why? Yes. Well not to go into too much detail around the cord cutting aspect, but we kind of look at broadcasting as one of those industries that's really been underfollowed. And we've been focusing on strictly over the air. And I think as the media market changes and the dynamics around how people watch television and what's happening in that industry, I think, I think are changing. And this is a way that we can really capitalize on that. So far, we've bought over 130, 140 television stations across the country, and that portfolio mm -hmm. is going to continue to build over time. But Phil, give me, a, give me a broader idea, though. I mean, like, what do you plan on doing with this vast array of broadcast operations? Well, the reality of it is, as there's a tremendous amount of, um, of, of change taking place in media between the cord cutters, between all the competition in the, in the over the top phenomenon. Um, this is an opportunity where, where the entities that typically wouldn't get recognized on uh, the, the, the uh, internet, or mm -hmm. you may not search for companies or, or programs, you're not going to be searching for 50 or 100 different programs on over the top all the time. There has right. to be another different medium for people to uh, 
to get uh, the eyeballs, as they say. And the uh, television station, with the move from analog to digital, and that whole dynamic is really changing how people are, and that whole that whole process of 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 the clarity, the content, yeah. is making the um, broadcast station that much more valuable. But how does that? I mean. How 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 much can can that disruption happen when you've got these big media companies and telecom companies, you know, merging? Right? You think about Disney, Fox, and Sprint, and T-Mobile. That those are all around the content side. We're not focusing focusing on content. We can't compete with them on on content. What we're doing is we're the we're the pipe. Mm -hmm. We're the um, the distribution platform per se, and that's how we are looking at it. Because there's only so many ways that you can dis distribute content. It's either over the internet, or cable, or quite frankly, over the air. And I think as people look at the opportunities or the the um, how the over the air market has changed, uh, and the fact that it's free, it's distributing that content is what we're focused on, not okay. necessarily the, the content, content itself. Uh, last time you were on with me, we talked about the Vietnamese resort, right? I yes. Think Grand Ho Tram uh, uh, Strip in uh, in Vietnam. Correct. Um, since then, there have been reports that business has not been good. Um, you know, ga gambling has not yet, um, you know, been opened up in Vietnam. So, are you still in? In it? Yes, we You're still. You're not going to sell. <laughs> we, as a matter of fact, uh, are still in it. Um, interestingly enough, we are in discussions with a uh, PE shop, which I can't go into detail, um, where we will hopefully um, get uh, get to where we want to be with that. But it's been a long slog. There's no question. It's I've been there for 10 years now, and we did we did uh, make some management changes, which has really turned around the operation. Mm -hmm. And uh, but is, is is legalizing gambling though? Is that going to be the key to get that business? Uh, I think from a local's perspective, yes. And they did pass the le the uh, decree to give the mm -hmm. the different gaming companies the licenses, and we we are up for getting it. And I think we ultimately will, which I think will be. Um, uh, a big, big step for the company, but it's ten years now. I'm, I'm looking at uh, different. Op I have to focus on, on my uh, operation here with uh, regards to HC2. The Vietnam Casino is still part of uh, my other entity. Uh, Phil, I hate to bring it up, but uh, you know there were reports about how President Trump might have helped you there in Vietnam. <laughs> Did he? The reality of it is no. He. Um, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think that his conversation with uh, the prime minister of Vietnam. I wouldn't. I wouldn't suspect that uh, my casino is at the tip of his tongue. You know, so, <laughs> um, and if he did, it, nothing has changed so far. But no, no. I think that was a little bit overblown. But. You know what can you do? Those are hot names, of course. Yes, no, um, most questions. No and question. Phil, before we go, just on the macro environment. I mean, you know, and speaking about the president and, and sort of and economic policies, do you find it easier to do business now than a year ago when I saw you? Yeah, there's no question. I think the markets have opened up a bit. You know, there's a, a bit more volatility today, but I think people are much more willing and open to do deals. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of transactions taking place in the market today, whereas uh, it was a little bit uh, quiet. Uh, uh, prior, but uh, but we 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 think that that um, as it relates to opportunity set, they're out there, and that's one of the good things that we're looking at from a holding company perspective.